In the last part of this chapter, you'll get to know two special attribute constraints, the not null and unique constraints. As the name already says, the not null constraint disallows any null values on a given column. This must hold true for the existing state of the database, but also for any future state. Therefore, you can only specify a not null constraint on a column that doesn't hold any null values yet. And it won't be possible to insert null values in the future. Before I go on explaining how to specify not null constraints, I want you to think about null values. What do they actually mean to you? There's no clear definition. Null can mean a couple of things. For example, that the value is unknown or does not exist at all. It can also be possible that the value does not apply to the column. Let's look into an example. Let's say we define a table students. The first two columns for the social security number and the last name cannot be null, which makes sense. This should be known and apply to every student. The home phone and office phone columns, though, should allow for null values, which is the default, by the way. Why? First of all, these numbers can be unknown for any reason or simply not exist because a student might not have a phone. Also, some values just don't apply. Some students might not have an office, so they don't have an office phone, and so forth. So, one important takeaway is that two null values must not have the same meaning. This also means that comparing null with null always results in a false value. You've just seen how to add a not null constraint to certain columns when creating a table. Just that not null after the respective columns. But you can also add and remove not null constraints to and from existing tables. To add a not null constraint to an existing table, you can use the alter column set not null syntax as shown here. Similarly, to remove a not null constraint, you can use alter column drop not null. The unique constraint on a column makes sure there are no duplicates in a column. So any given value in a column can only exist once. This, for example, makes sense for university short names, as storing universities more than once leads to unnecessary redundancy. However, it doesn't make sense for university cities, as two universities can coexist in the same city. Just as with the not null constraint, you can only add a unique constraint if the column doesn't hold any duplicates before you apply it. Here's how to create columns with unique constraints. Just add the unique keyword after the respective table column. You can also add a unique constraint to an existing table. For that, you have to use the add constraint syntax. This is different from adding a not null constraint. However, it's a pattern that frequently occurs. You'll see plenty of other examples of add constraint in the remainder of this course. Okay, time now to apply the not null and unique constraints to some of the columns of your current university affiliation.